Why do narcissists believe in conspiracy theories? Part 3. Having examined some of the circumstances that may increase a propensity for believing in conspiracy theories, and also those circumstances which mean people are less likely to believe in them, what about the role of the narcissist? Now, it's important to emphasize at the outset that not all narcissists are believers in conspiracy theories. Furthermore, believing in something that's deemed a conspiracy theory does not mean somebody is a narcissist. As I made the point at the outset of this short series, you can't make a determination about one thing to say that it is determinative of what an individual is. You need to look at a range of evidence over a period of time. Nevertheless, it is relatively common that narcissists believe in conspiracy theories. Why is this? Narcissists, as you know, pursue the prime aims. Their narcissism, whether they're aware or unaware, unaware being the majority of narcissists, compels the narcissist to pursue, through a variety of means, control over those around them, to extract fuel from those individuals, seek out character traits and residual benefits. Everything that the narcissist does when it comes to other people is governed by this need for the pursuit of the prime aims. What therefore happens when the narcissist faces a threat to that all-pervasive need for control? Seasoned students of mine will know that the response of the narcissist is to go to one of the three assertions of control, direct, indirect, or withdrawal. That the way that the narcissism is structured is that it always enables the narcissist to gain that control. One way or another, it's always obtained. It might not be in the conventional sense of control as you would understand it. More often, it is, it is occasioned by the construct of control generated by the narcissism. But it doesn't matter that it doesn't accord with what you see as control. All that matters is the subconscious or conscious approach of the narcissist. Accordingly, when that individual faces the threat to control, the narcissism considers, can we nullify that threat to control head-on, directly, i.e. through a hoover? Now, many threats to control come about for the narcissist as a consequence of the activity of organisations, of governments, of the establishment. Sometimes, those organisations are somewhat amorphous. Where do they manifest? The particular agents, people, at a building? But sometimes it's less clear than that. And thus, this makes an appropriate target to which the narcissist can assert control difficult to locate. Furthermore, the sheer power, nature, resources and assets of these institutions, especially the government, is so vast that a private individual is in no actual position to take them head on. There might be some instances where someone might bring legal proceedings against the government for the purposes of trying to expose behaviours associated with a conspiracy theory, but that is relatively uncommon. The private individual isn't in the position to suddenly muster a private army to march upon the seat of government to compel them to admit to the conspiracy behaviours that they have been engaging in to expose it. Accordingly, where the narcissist perceives a particular behaviour which includes them within a group that threatens their sense of control. So let's take, for example, the issue of vaccines. Leaving aside whether you believe that they were right or wrong, let us use that as an example. A government issues a mandate which essentially states... If you want to be able to travel outside of this country, if you want to be able to use certain services within this country, attend certain mass events, you need to be vaccinated against this new disease that has come about. That diktat is a threat to the control of the narcissist. How might the narcissist deal with that? It could be that the narcissism actually states, I see this as something that needs to be done 
because I want to be able to achieve these other things. And therefore, I agree that I will be vaccinated. And therefore, they assert control through agreement, take the vaccine, and then they can attend the various events, travel, etc. However, in many instances, this diktat that that individual must be vaccinated remains a threat to control to the narcissist. Their narcissism rejects the suggestion of agreement as a ways of nullifying that control. The narcissist may write to the relevant organisation and say to them, I don't want to be vaccinated, but I still want to be able to travel. Of course, they're going to get short shrift. The relevant government official will tell them, if they bother to respond at all, if you want to travel, you have to be vaccinated. That's the law. And in the circumstances, that attempt to nullify the threat to control has failed. It may well be the case that the narcissist doesn't even bother to try that route, because the narcissism tells them it's pointless. The faceless edifice of government is simply going to defeat them that route. An alternative would be for them to assert control through the third assertion of control, which is simply to remain in a position of withdrawal and jettison. I didn't want to travel anyway, I'm not getting vaccinated, so I'll just stay here. Whilst that might be seen as cutting off your nose to spite your face, something which narcissists do commonly, it allows the narcissist to gain that sense of control, and therefore the narcissism has done its job. It hasn't allowed the receipt particularly of fuel, it hasn't acquired character traits, and it may even have lost some residual benefits, for instance, the ability to go and travel somewhere or attend a particular event. But nevertheless, that all-important control has been obtained. There is, however, a further alternative, the second assertion of control, indirect. And this is where the conspiracy theory plays its part for the narcissist. The narcissist lacks either the inclination or the ability and asset to challenge that direct threat to control head on. Staying in withdrawal is deemed to be unsuitable by the narcissism. Instead, the narcissist maintains that actually this mandate for you to become vaccinated for the purposes of travel and attendance at sports events, etc., is simply a cover-up for trying to control you. It's a test to see how compliant you are. Or they're actually going to be injecting you with more than just a vaccine. They're going to inject you with particular microscopic parts which will have some deleterious impact upon you. One example of this was that there was anti-vaccine propaganda, not in relation to COVID-19, but elsewhere, which suggested that it was actually a Western intrigue to sterilise Muslim girls, and that the vaccine is made up of gelatin from porcine, which is haram and therefore forbidden in Islam. In other instances, for example, in relation to COVID-19, some individuals believed that it didn't actually exist, that the virus was intangible, and therefore it was hard for them to accept that a flu-like illness could be life-threatening, and therefore believed that in actual fact it was simply a means of making money by compelling people to buy masks, to have an injection, etc. Others maintained that it was a pre-planned project to cover the Bill Gates trackable microchip, and therefore there was an infodemic of information provided on social media that some people thought that it was a punishment from God or that 5G technology directly transmitted the virus and would weaken human immunity. Others thought that it was a plandemic, that it was basically a conspiracy of the pharmaceutical companies to sell their products and provide that as a means of making money rather than actually helping people. You'll have come across various ideas about what all of COVID-19 and other vaccination programs actually meant. Now, in the circumstances, the fact is that the vaccination program, whatever it was, is viewed as a threat to the narcissist's sense of control. And as I've mentioned, 
the direct or the withdrawal methods are not attractive. And therefore, the narcissism causes the narcissist to believe that there is some unsavory alternative explanation for why this government wants to tell our narcissist that they have to have an injection. This belief, whether right or whether wrong, and we're not debating that aspect, causes the narcissist to say, I'm not going to take this particular vaccine because... And their narcissism creates a belief as to why it's inappropriate. It might be the case that the narcissist has done some reading on the internet and has found other people who have formed a view that the relevant vaccine program is something is covering for something else. And therefore, the narcissist's narcissism seizes on that information for the purposes of enabling this particular narcissist to reject the threat to control. Accordingly, what it enables the narcissist to do is achieve the nullification of threat to control by belief in what would be termed a conspiracy theory. The rise of social media and the internet has allowed more people who have this need to reject these threats to control to be in touch with one another. That has three outcomes. One, it provides a narcissist with more source material that their narcissism can utilise. Aha! I see that somebody has written a paper here explaining that it's all part of a plot to inject us with microscopic droplets that will then make us more susceptible to being controlled by the new world order. Makes sense to me. Secondly, it allows the narcissist validation with regard to the indirect assertion of control, where other people agree with them that there is this underhand plan associated with the vaccine program. It then enables the narcissist to consciously achieve control over the relevant government or governmental body and thus nullifies the threat to control. They couldn't nullify the threat directly. Staying in withdrawal wasn't attractive. And thus, by finding other like-minded people on the internet, and they may not necessarily be other narcissists, the fact that those people agree with them in a chat room or by messages pinging backwards and forwards, it then gives the narcissist that indirect sense of control. Thirdly, they will gain fuel from the like-minded responses of the individuals around them. Accordingly, the indirect assertion of control finds the presence of a conspiracy theory particularly attractive because it enables the narcissism to use that conspiracy theory to gain control, which is central to the narcissist's existence. It allows the narcissist to draw fuel, which is central to the narcissist's existence. And therefore, the conspiracy theory for some narcissists, finds the presence of a conspiracy theory hugely attractive. It also accords with the inherent paranoia that a narcissist has. All narcissists are paranoid to some degree, and that paranoia will harness the concept of a conspiracy theory because it's about something trying to get the narcissist as part of a wider group, the government, a government body, a sinister shady organisation. And therefore, the paranoia that exists within the narcissist sees that it can make use of the conspiracy theory within this paranoia to drive the narcissist in pursuit of the prime aims, particularly control and fuel. Narcissists are also prone to magical thinking, I am the sole person that has this special information about what the government are up to. That makes me important, a threat to them. They will probably try and shut me down. We've noticed that, of course, with Russell Brand recently, that this magical thinking has been at the forefront, that he believes that he has certain information and that the recent allegations against him are part of a plot to shut him down. It may well be the case that he speaks the truth about various things, but that doesn't necessarily then mean that he is being shut down or the allegations to do so are 
are trying to seek the closure of his platform. Indeed, if you look at it logically, it completely has failed. In fact, the allegations have given him more prominence, a greater platform, and have enabled more people to check out what he has to say. I suspect that his subscribership has increased, notwithstanding the demonetization of his channel. Accordingly, it wouldn't necessarily hold up that there is an attempt to shut him down. But of course, his narcissism, and if you haven't watched my series on Russell Brand, I'd encourage you to do so to understand why he is a narcissist, creates this magical thinking whereby he believes he is in possession of special important information. And often that's linked to the existence of conspiracy theories. Accordingly, other narcissists, through their own magical thinking, will believe I'm special. They want to get me, and that's because I've seen behind the curtain. I've got the information about what they're up to. Thus, not all narcissists engage in conspiracy theories, but the attraction of the conspiracy theory to certain narcissists is that it is an excellent way of getting to the prime aims. It is a way of nullifying the threat to control posed by a large body such as a government. It allows the assertion of control over other like-minded people and the extraction of fuel from those individuals too. Powered by paranoia and magical thinking, it is another device that enables the narcissist to get to the prime aims. Which narcissists are prone to believing in conspiracy theories? You'll find them mainly within lesser and mid-range. Lesser as a consequence of the fact that they have no emotional empathy whatsoever and no cognitive empathy, and certainly lower, lesser and middle lesser, can be readily led by individuals in that regard. Upper lesser A are actually more likely to be the individuals that would manufacture conspiracy theories rather than necessarily always following them from other people. That's because upper lesser type A tend to adopt more leadership positions. They're often found for existence in cults. Mid-range narcissists are also susceptible to the use of conspiracy theories because it's a very useful method of nullifying a threat to control in circumstances where it is somewhat passive-aggressive. I don't have to confront the organisation. I can just keep talking about it with other people and pointing out on social media, etc., how dangerous this organisation is. Thus, in the circumstances, conspiracy theories are not believed by all narcissists. But as a consequence of their pursuit of the prime aims, a conspiracy theory provides a very useful vehicle for the narcissist to assert control over other people, nullify the threat to control posed by large governmental bodies, organisations, businesses, etc., and draw fuel into the process. Powered by paranoia and magical thinking, and the fact that narcissists generally lack trust on a greater scale, tying into the points that I made in earlier parts, it's no wonder that the conspiracy theory is often believed by certain narcissists. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.